waiting for my signal. That would, it should be everything on now. Yay. Power. I need like a whole row of lights to just sort of indicate. Ding, 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 ding. Big yellow, green light. We are go. Welcome to Legends of the Drowned Isles. This is a homebrew 5th ed D&D campaign set in the world of Omisha. A little world that I've been working on for yeah, four years now, I think. Sorted. Something like that. This is the second campaign in that world set 1,000 years into the past. In a time that has been largely forgotten in the current world of the other section, the other campaign sometimes known as the Great Confusion, a mere footnote in most of the books of the future. I am joined by my three players, starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh uh, and sitting here stuck in a room full of eyes. My name is Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who very much... The reason why she calls the dude Basic Guy. Hey, I'm Nax and I'm playing Medrick, who did not call the dude Basic Guy. <laughs> well, the eyes have it, indeed. Let's take a little look at what happened in the previous session. The group continued to plan out their underwater approach to the source of the water spout. Floating above the area, they noticed several people patrolling the area, including many sea devils accompanied by a few of the larger crab-like people and also the larger four-armed leader, whom Silas remembered wore a silver trident attached by a chain at his hip. When that leader descended into the cave-like opening they noticed before, they made their plan. Regalesta would swim quickly, distracting the guards away from the entrance, and the rest of the group would make directly for the cave. The plan worked, and the group descended below. While the stairs immediately inside the cave appeared to be of large, solid stone, it quickly became apparent that the entire structure could shift and move. The steps appeared to be able to slide over each other and to slide sideways. The walls quickly ceased to be straight and plumb, and the entire space seemed to have turned and twisted. They came down to a plateau where two sets of stairs further moved to the left and to the right. With nothing else to guide them, they chose to travel down the rightmost path, but quickly found that it too turned back and forth and became more of a tube than a tunnel. They traveled considerably far, until finally they came to a narrow, tall door with a wheel in its center. Turning it, they entered into a small chamber with another door and another wheel. They determined that the interior door would only open if the exterior one was closed first, much like the design of the underwater grotto they had found the sea devils in before although this was, car was covered in ancient carved stone with regular openings. Sure enough, upon closing the door, the water seemed to be pushed out by rapidly flowing air. Once inside, they found themselves in narrow and twisting pathways again. Stone seemed to have crumbled away from the walls in places, revealing that much of it had been nothing more than a thin facade, covering over gears, cogs, and moving metal rods, Thrumming sounds seemed to come from all around them, rising and falling in waves. Around one corner they spotted another door, and heard the faint sounds of heavy hammering and a pained voice. Approaching cautiously within, they found a strange-looking skeleton that seemed to be composed of mismatched bones, with clicking mechanical bits inside of it. It hammered away at what looked like jewelry bits and silver goblets, breaking them down over a smoldering hot fire. Beside it sat a metal bucket with what appeared to be melted silver. It seemed to notice them, but disregarded them and returned to its work. A human moan was heard behind another door, and inside they found a young human boy calling out in a grisly, body-shaped metal cage. Gaetano had been trapped within it. This device continually prodded him with sharp spikes, keeping him barely awake, but significantly wounded. At one point he passed out, and another spike pressed into him, apparently returning just enough of his essence to keep him alive and awake and in pain. Before they could rescue him, another skeleton, apparently on patrol, came to the door and attacked. The first skeleton, now apparently urged by the first, by the second, rather, joined in, but they quickly destroyed them. 
the, devi the devious torture device was wrenched apart by the group, freeing the weakened Gaetano, who explained that he came in search of the boy's body, thinking him already dead. Weak but determined, Gaetano pl pledged to continue with them. The boy, named Lowen, was given one of Annie's daggers to defend himself. Before leaving, they discovered that much treasure, destined to be broken down, laid about the room and grabbed what they could safely carry before continuing on, including pocketing one of the strange mechanisms at the heart of the skeletons. They continued to move through the tunnels, but were discovered by another group. Two of the skeletons resembled the ones they had seen, but one of them was larger, with metal rods protruding from where its stomach would have been. Each rod moved back and forth, anchored to its reinforced spine, and held on its end a large, spinning, raw, uh, round saw blade. It dove down the hallway, passing through and around everything, cutting all in its pathway. Later, the group would reason that its original purpose may have been to clean the hallways of any blockages from the way that it seemed to touch every surface with its dangerous appendages. Although they were victorious, Medric was seriously wounded, and Gaetano was somewhat disturbed by, his, by the weakness introduced by his level of exhaustion. With a heavy heart, he suggested that it would be dangerous for him to proceed, and decided to take Lowen to the surface for their own safety. The group continued, on the lookout for a spot to lay low and recover. Not far away, they found a room that suited this purpose. It had a door which closed and was mostly empty, aside from what looked like loose metal and stone parts, similar to what they had seen in the walls. As they rested, however, the room seemed to shake and shudder and shift in strange ways, tilting and rolling from side to side. As they discussed what they felt might be happening, Medric happened to utter the name of the person thought to be somehow responsible, Taraz. After the name was spoken aloud, a cool breeze moved through the room, and the walls shifted. Dozens of metal eyes peered in on them. And indeed, that's where we find ourselves. One pair of eyes on one of the walls, the, let's call it the northwest wall of this strangely angled room. In fact, we'll move to the map at this point, although... You will probably note that given the <laughs> given the dark and uh, closed-in nature, it's not much of a map at the moment. It's more of a spot. Uh, but you are in that room, and on the northwestern wall, two of those eyes seem to regard you with a bit more attention than the rest, and little glowing red orbs can be seen within them, peering down on the room. To be fair, I only uttered like one-third of his name. It's true. And also, uh, the screen is really blurry. The screen is really blurry. Yeah. Um, is that just on my end, or...? It, do, you oh, mean, one. do you mean the Roll20 screen, or do you mean the screen between us? The screen between all of us. I can't do much about that, I'm afraid. Uh, and I can't look at it because I would change my side, so... Uh, rely upon roll 20 for your particular moves and maneuvers um, and the rest are very small portraits hopefully it repairs itself um, shortly um, and hopefully you're not seeing it too blurry on your end or on the recording we shall see uh, the eyes seem to be moving back and forth within the space and, and regarding you what would you like to do you've had a chance to actually rest now so that part has been completed Make sure to note that if you have uh, hit points missing, that sort of thing. Oh, right. You said there were two in particular that were glowing red? That's right. It seemed to be on uh, this upper wall, kind of just behind where you are. Or where Mark uh, is standing, actually. Silas is going to stand up and say, uh, Hello! Oops. Uh, who may we uh, do? <laughs> that sense is weird, but <laughs> um, it doesn't seem to be a response. It just seems to be studying you. It's an awkward sentence for the awkward situation of somebody watching us while we rest. I'll touch it, one of the like one of the gems that has an eye in it. 
Okay. Um, it feels slightly warm to the touch. Not warm enough to bother you, obviously, but um, mostly just sort of the, the sense of power glowing within it. Doesn't seem to react otherwise. Could those be removed from the wall? You could certainly try. They seem to be embedded within the, the structure and machinery of the wall, although some of the machinery and some of the structure moved out of the way when these uh, sort of became uh, aware, if you will. I'll move to the side, see if it keeps it in and out. It seems to be watching you in particular, yes. And you do feel that sense of the eyes following you as you move around. But you're fairly convinced they actually are moving and it's not just an illusion. Uh, guys? Yup. You had to go and say his name. Well, it was only one third of his name. I didn't realize it would be like gestures wildly at everything and towards the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if somebody were backwards they'll go away. I don't think so. I can probably their master's name. Hmm. I'll try saying the name backwards. Zara. No seems no effect seems to happen. I don't like this place. Let's get on with it. Yep. Um so I was just going to step closer to one of the uh, red glowing ones. Mm -hmm. They seem to shift and look closer at you. Hmm. I'm going to reach out and touch it. And if it doesn't do anything, see if it unscrews. Okay. Um, as as I noted before, it is somewhat uncomfortably warm to the touch. Um, it's kind of embedded within a collection of uh, wires and metal rods. Um, as you stand closer to it, you you kind of notice that it it has a a very complicated structure in the wall, and you imagine that that's in part so that it can actually move as necessary. Um, there's not really much to grab onto. The stone itself is embedded within these moving wires and, and uh, bands. Hmm. Should I smash it? Uh, no. If this is part of the structure, we don't get the structure angry at us. We decide it needs to defend itself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good point. Um, Let's just continue on. You know, when we were in the other cave with the sea devils, you pretended you did something to have them not kill you, and then they were on our side for a while. Uh, what if you pretended to be I'll mouth the words and not say them? <laughs> pretended and, to be he who should not be named? <laughs> yeah, what if you pretended to be him? I don't know. And had... I don't know enough about him. I don't know what he looks like. Uh, but we know he's a jerk. Tyrant. Want to be God? Yeah, I think we need to know what he looks like in order to fool it, though. I mean, it probably knows him. But you keep that in mind. Maybe I have to do that. Um, and really, it just seems to be watching us right now, and it's not doing anything, unless maybe it's called for reinforcement or something, but. Yeah, he was hoping that no. Hmm. Well, the the previous one, the skeleton that got away, ran to something local and then came back. So I don't think these things sort of set off alarms, but this is a little different. We might as well keep going. Yeah, let's go. Kind of all we've got is to find it before it goes too bad. Yeah. Like the room was spinning. It's certainly moving or changing or something. Hopefully Gaetano and the cake uh, Yeah, you look pretty exhausted. 
Yeah. In the best ship. No. All okay. Right, well, let's go. Yep. Crack knuckles. Grab hammer. As you step out of the room, as the first of you steps out of the room, uh, the eyes that were glowing red uh, no longer glow. And in fact, all the eyes around the room seem to sink back in and metal plates slide back over them, probably where they were before. That was creepy. By the way, Crack was grabbing the orc warrior. Each of you make a perception check, hearing based. Nineteen. Yes. One. Ouch. And he's probably feeling a little creeped out still by the eyes that were. I am super freaked out, guys. Just want to get out of here. Um, Silas, as you step out into the hallway, uh, despite all the the heavy noise which surrounds you, still that sort of heavy thrumming sound, which you can kind of make off towards the uh, southeast seems to be the strongest. In fact, it almost feels like there's pulses through the floor as you coordinate the different senses. Um, you start to hear the sort of rattling sound of, uh, of well, what you would have recognized before as the sounds of, of a skeleton walking down the hallway not far away. Well, <clears throat> I will point in, the dire in one direction and uh, whisper, Sultan, and uh, then I'll point to the southeast, and uh, I think most of the machinery is down this way. Is the skeleton in the direction of the machinery? No. It'd be coming, well, it's hard to tell, but it sounds like it's coming from the hallway, not from the wall. Uh, the framing was from a wall? So the, the thrumming seemed to be coming from the southeastern wall direction. Okay. And what direction? Oh, I don't know what the one the skeleton was in. Right, you're just hearing the echo of it uh, on the solid walls around you. Okay, I'll let them know. Um, just a note, I, I had asked about it last, uh, last game, um, but... Uh, during the um, for um, I would like to have unattuned to the ring of mind shielding. Okay. Just a I asked about it and then just remembered. Look at my mind that I'd asked about it. Good, uh, I had forgotten about it. So um, your mind explodes. Well, I'm just kidding. My mind explodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So you, where do you put you put that take the ring off and kind of put it in an inside pocket somewhere? Um, I, I'd still wear it. I would just focus on breaking the link between us. Okay. Just so I didn't get lost. Okay. It now feels as just a simple metal band around your finger. The sound you heard, Silas, of someone moving stops. Okay. Uh, well, what direction do we want to go in? The direction where there's no skeletons. I don't know where that is. Well, let's go to the direction we haven't already been in. Then. Yeah, that's a good place to start. Remember, there will be a marching order because the hallway in this particular spot is mm -hmm. narrow. So. I would like to be in the middle. I'll sure. go first. I can, be at, I can be at the back, yeah. Yeah, we might as well head toward the thrumming. <clears throat> okay. Is there a path like towards the uh, northeast? Um, well, right now there's only it? one path. There's a wall right behind you. It's all walls okay. around you right there. So we got to go back the way we came then. Yeah, you'll have to. There was a T junction down here. Is that guy still there? 
the uh, wreckage of the skeleton, yes, is still there. I mean, the one to the northwest of me. To the northwest of you? Uh, you do see yeah. a skeleton. You did not see another yeah. one there before. Uh, this one, I hadn't realized that you'd moved that far ahead, sorry. Uh, you see another one standing there. It seems to be simply standing, but you do see within the pits of its eyes a slight red glow. It appears to be looking directly at you. Waiting. Hello? I think they were expecting us. I'll wave at it from far away. It doesn't we seem might... to be waving back. Might as well keep going because uh, I mean, if they're expecting us, they're expecting us. I'll move a little closer. Okay. Is it doing anything? It does. It steps back into the corner, leaving a pathway. It's trying to lead me somewhere. It's probably a trap. Yeah. Um, there could be a hundred skeletons right where it's leading me. I'll say it to uh, head and then into Annie because I think actually I don't think I can do groups. It's one at a time. Um, <clears throat> the trap is probably going to be there, and if we don't follow it, we're stuck in a massive building that we don't know where to go. So we might as well go into the trap we know about. Yeah, I suppose. That's fair. That, I'll move a little closer to it. Okay. It seems to be regarding you. It's moving its head as if to to watch you, but doesn't take any other movement. Is it still in the corner? Yep. What do you want? The head tilts slightly as if observing you. Nothing else happens. Can you take his heart? It turns his head and looks to its left up the hallway. It doesn't move otherwise. <clears throat> Guys, should we go? But, yeah. I don't really trust it. My vote is yes. I mean, we know it's going to be a trap anyways. Well, can you answer that question better than bit. being caught surprised? Yeah. I'll move. Can I move defensively, like, just in case it attacks me? Yeah, absolutely. Describe what it looks like when Medrick is, is being defensive here. I believe the shield has expired. So it's now just yeah. a regular size. Mm-hmm. I just expect an attack. So shield is like up and not in in effect, but like ready to go into a fighting stance. Okay. There's a moment as you pass by it where it seems to shift a little bit. Uh, and as you get that close, you sort of notice too that, you know, it's it's got one arm which is not actually bent at the elbow. It's because the bone itself extends all the way from the shoulder down to where it uh, connects onto the wrist. Uh, it's a massive bone, probably taken from maybe a giant. And then the hand itself seems to be normal humanoid size. So it doesn't actually have any any elbow movement at all. It just sort of has a straight arm. Uh, and it kind of shifts a little bit, and you get the creaking sound of of the bones kind of scratching against each other. And, the, and when you get really close, you can also hear a little bit of the whir and whine of the mechanism, which is at its center, like all the rest. The wires kind of flex and, and tense on the inside. It shifts its uh, hips a little bit and then turns its head, kind of watching you as you move by, but otherwise takes no action. Are you coming with us? Doesn't move. Yeah. I'll follow Mendrick C. Uh, lead. Okay. Similar to when Medric passed by it, it tilts its head and sort of looks you up and down, um, kind of looking 
strangely curious. The the skeletons you've encountered so far that didn't have their eyes glowing like this seem to be completely uninterested for the most part. The first one you encountered didn't even stop its work. It just sort of looked over, saw you were there, and continue on. The second one uh, was sort of marching inward and immediately went into attack mode. This one's definitely acting differently. Um, it's acting, for a lack of a better word, human or sentient, I guess would be a better way to put it. But it observes you as you pass by. Again, kind of shifting a little bit. Almost like it's shifting weight or shifting uh, uh, its, uh, its sort of shoulder stance. Like the other one, it has, uh, it has a, well, this one actually has a hand, and in that hand is a short sword, but it doesn't seem to be brandishing it so much as carrying it. That's the arm with no elbow. The other one is kind of blunted off, and you realize that it's actually, kind of as you pass, more than one hand that's sort of been strapped together to form a, a simple club at the, end of its, at the end of its arm. But just like with uh, Medric, I'll move your, your counter up here. It seems to watch as you go by. I'll yell over at Silas. Hey, Silas, that one looks smarter than the other ones. Can you, can you see if you can, like, magically talk inside its head? Hmm. I don't know if I want to reveal that to them yet, but... Uh... <laughs> Aside yeah. from the fact that he just yelled it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he's not responding, so maybe he can't hear. Who knows? Um... Yeah, no, I, th- I think whatever's in here has the ability to inhabit them, or con- or directly control them. Hmm. Yeah, Silas will just pass by it. Okay. I'll just move your your counters up a little bit so we have the full lineup here. And as with the others, it seems to um, observe. You, Silas, as you move by, uh, make an intuition check, Silas. Insight? Mm. Or insight, thank you. Okay. 15. Similar to the way it moved before, um, kind of looking up and down and assessing, but you would swear that the way that it looked and lingered perhaps a little bit at your face, it's almost like it recognized you. It likes you. Well, this is bad. And as you it move down the uh, as you move down the hallway a little bit, it falls in line behind you. And seems to be marching along with you. Do you just continue down the hallway? Yeah, slowly. Yeah. Just just pee around the corner. Okay. Aside from signs that there has been recent traffic, probably from this thing itself, maybe others, um, you don't see anything particular down there. You do see another doorway to be opened down this way. And actually, I will make it open already as something just passed through it. If I can grab that. Was it the scale that's with us? That's not the right button. Well, you have no idea. It did come from this direction recently. It must have left the door open behind it. The door is open and against this this exterior wall here. Yeah. I'll say over to the bell and not too, too loud just in case there's something else there, but is there a trap in there? No, I guess or no. Just seems to be staring straight ahead, watching the three of you. <sighs> Super undead. Forward slowly again. Okay. Peek around the door really quietly. Looks like another hallway. Turns off to the left, up ahead somewhere. Cell behind me, right? I don't see them on the map. <laughs> <laughs> they have lagged behind a little bit. Are all of you trying to move stealthily or not? Pastor um, Trice, I think, is still active, so you are already kind of stealthy. 
It only lasted an hour, so it wouldn't be around. Oh, anymore. it's only an hour. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I would be falling slowly, so yeah. Okay. If you. Um, Silas isn't trying to make a lot of noise. He's not particularly stealthing. I guess I ain't watching us, so. Yeah, that, that, that is true. I mean, that's literally true. I just want to make sure. Been stealthy. Okay. Medrick's still going on ahead, or is he waiting for the rest to catch up? Yeah, we're waiting for the rest to catch up. Okay. Yeah, we're I just keep getting lost in the dark. But, uh, mm -hmm. That's fair. <laughs> when this moment, something happens. Okay. I'll cross the doorway. And it, it follows uh, behind all of you. Not crowding at all, just sort of keeping pace. You can see a little bit ahead of you, Medrick, uh, that the, the hallway turns off to the left. You can also just barely make out uh, another doorway that seems to be there. This one is closed. And when you get close to that corner, you can just barely make out, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I'll let you know that there is a, uh, a skeleton seemingly at the end of the hallway just to your left, and the hallway itself turns to the right. The skeleton does not have glowing eyes. What's he doing? Standing there. This one's built a little bit differently than the last one. It actually has two elbows, but the arms are of different sizes. Um, in fact, when you kind of look a little bit closer, you notice that its right arm is weirdly even more flexible because it's composed of three small arms. So it technically has two elbows on that side. It's carrying a, uh, looks like a, a, a rusty battered sword. The other one is just a hand. Seems to be relatively normal. Seems that way, anyway. I'll move closer to the door. Okay. Is it doing anything? The, the skeleton. When you move close to the door, you notice that the eyes of the skeleton turn red. Small glow of red energy. From behind you, Silas, you can tell that the slight red glow that was coming from the skeleton illuminating parts of the space around you has vanished. The skeleton in front of you, Medric, raises its left hand and points down the hallway beside it. Oh, okay, but what's behind the door? Do you and I'll it? point at the door. Like, I'm asking that to the skeleton. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure response. But... It lowers its arm and just sort of looks at you, cocks its head slightly. Make an uh, insight check. Thirteen. Okay. Um, it seems to be kind of just directing you, and when you don't immediately go that direction, it sort of tilts its head in what you can only interpret as curiosity, but not concern. I'll open the door. Okay. The door opens kind of heavily. It creaks a little bit as it opens, um, and I will, excuse me, I'll remove the, uh, the door from the map. I can get there. And you see a fairly large room, uh, kind of L-shaped or reverse L-shaped. Um, across the, f the uh, area, it, uh, whoops, let me grab the right level. Um, you see the remains of what look like beds, uh, three or four beds that you can see from this angle kind of going around. Uh, what looked like they were probably chests stacked up at one point. Um, but littered across the floor and on the, on the beds and in uh, piles are bones of every size and shape. You can see these skulls and uh, arms, leg bones and fingers, um, chests, all kind of strewn about. Um, only partially organized a little bit by the door. The further in you can see that uh, back here in particular in this back sp spot, um, it just sort of looks like they were brought in and dumped. One thing that you do notice is that all the bones seem to be relatively clean of any flesh whatsoever. There is a little bit of, of a strip of, of leather here and there. And as you kind of walk in with your, your natural glow, there's a little glint from a spot here and there. Uh, probably a gold tooth, maybe a few other things. But as you, as you, as you kind of look at the in, inside, 
Um, it gives you the impression sort of of what had been a a sort of uh, bunk room, essentially. Uh, make a perception check from the door. You can choose to go in if you want. Um, the floor is a little bit littered, but there is a pathway through. I'll go in a little bit. Not too, too far in. Okay. Perception is nine. Yeah. Unless you take a look around, there's nothing you can really discern from here. <clears throat> Are, is Annie and Silas seeing this? Uh, I'm all... Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, uh, yeah, Silas will... Uh, huh. So looks I'm going to just put Medric like... slightly inside the room. Move you guys up a little bit. Looks like parts storage? Yeah. Is anybody else taking a look in the room? I guess uh, uh, both of you can make perception checks. You're yeah, just going by the door. Door. Ooh, yeah. Definitely part storage. Piles and piles of unsorted bones. From there, uh, all you can see is the occasional glint as uh, Bedrick kind of looks around and his eyes literally uh, scan the room and light it up. Little, little glints off of something shiny, <laughs> possibly a tooth or something. Maybe a particularly well-polished skull. Can I go towards the shiny? You certainly can. You move further in? Yep. Okay. Won't be long. I'll just go. You move a little closer. You can uh, dig around with some investigation if you like. I thought I saw a shiny right here. Guess not. As you kind of uh, bend down and kind of try to pull out this skull that you thought had a bit of, uh, of a shiny in it, some of the other uh, bones kind of clatter down and, and fall over. What you kind of notice is something that you sort of felt but automatically uh, dealt with, and it was a little bit underneath your, your regular perception. Um, that is that a lot of the bones are piled up along one wall, as if the whole room had tilted somewhat. It's not really much to be noticed in tilting it right now, but the bones are piled up along one, one wall, but the the uh, the beds, what remains of them, and there isn't much. Looks like long rotted wood that's fallen apart. The beds themselves are, have not moved, and then you realize that they seem to be bolted down to the floor. Whoa! It's like the entire room was moving. I'll say to Annie and Silas. Anyway, there's nothing in here. And Fritz. Oops, uh, keep moving the blue dot. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. The blue dot is the perspective dot, so it helps those at home as if I when I forget to move the rest of it. So you start I'll moving down the hallway it indicated? Yep. Okay. It seems to just watch you as you go by. Look around the corner. Hallway continues on. Another hallway. <laughs> yep. No hallway. What do you mean? Is uh, Silas catching up there too? Yep. Okay. We're sticking together. Both you have of two those skeletons following you now. Both of those skeletons fall in line behind you. Uh, we're starting to get sandwiched. Door. Uh, you see a door up ahead of you? Yes, actually, that one would also be open. One second here. Whoops. And that one has been opened to reveal another hallway. Behind the two of you, or behind the three of you, I should say, uh, the skeletons are continuing to keep pace. Are you moving just slowly and cautiously? Have you picked up the speed at all? What's the... What's the motion? Slowly and cautiously. Okay. Yo. As you round that particular corner. I peek around the corner first, though. Okay. <laughs> um, you can see a glow of light. In fact, I'm going to... I think I can do that. Just one second. I have to adjust a light. Um, 
because I just realized I did not do that. Uh, there, you should see able be able to see a bit of light uh, around the corner now. I can't. <laughs> oh, such fun with lighting. <laughs> I think I just deleted it by accident. You sh well, actually, it's further down around the corner. You could see the light, sorry. Uh, okay. Not quite around the corner there. Uh, but if you move... There's light down there, you guys. Just down where that light is. You can sort of make out a little bit. From. I'll approach. The, what color is the light? Is it just like regular light or like red light, green light? Uh, it it seems to be quite brilliant, uh, bright, uh, white, bluish light. Um, it seems to shimmer and shift as you watch it a little bit. Uh, it reminds you a little bit like the sunlight seen filtered through the water as you've been underwater numerous times now during the day. And that sort of way the light beams shift and shimmer and, sh and shake um, within the uh, uh, within the the span of of water. Sorry, I lost my words there for a moment. I told my friends some light over there. I cautiously approach towards the light. Okay. I mean, light isn't normally blue. So something's up. You can see the light uh, uh, approaching from the sort of northeast. And it seems to be somewhat bound in the space that it's in. Actually, just a second. I realized that part of the problem is... Oh, no, the door is open. Okay. <clears throat> so, yes, there's you see the light here, but it seems to be coming from around the corner somewhere. And also the, the sound, uh, the thrumming and the reverberating seem to get very, very strong as you round that hallway. Um, most of the plaster on the walls has now been kind of knocked free. And as you watch, some more seems to uh, fall apart, to fall away as uh, machinery in the walls churns up. A large wheel beside you starts to spin very, very slowly at first, slowly, uh, but gathering more and more momentum. The lights in the eyes of the skeleton right behind you, Silas, go dim. Okay. More. Okay. Is it still following us? They both are still following you. Okay. Keep around the corner. And you look into where the source of the light has come from. It's very, very bright, and you imagine anyone else who's been spending this time in the darkness probably would have a little bit of a time adjusting. For you, though, you stare into the sun as a matter of course. This is not nearly so bright as that. What you do see is at the center of five spinning wheels, two of which seem embedded in the floor at the moment, one which seems to be there uh, uh, is starting to spin up, is a brilliant... Uh, oblong rounded object seems to be flowing uh, floating about two feet off the ground tethered there by silver wires and some uh, metal arms or metal bands uh, that is the source of the light flowing in it seems to be a, a like a translucent crystal uh, shining with brilliant light that fills the entire space behind it is a robed figure who seems to be uh, adjusting things around it, turning to one of the uh, spinning uh, cogs right behind it, fussing with it for a little while, and then uh, kind of turning back, back and forth, almost ignoring you. The robes seem to be somewhat torn and old. They have a vague uh, golden hue, or at least they would have a long time ago. Now that hue has been reduced to mostly just a, a hint of what it was, shining, maybe golden thread woven through it, shining in the light that's there, the bright and brilliant uh, luminance. You see uh, 
Otherwise, the room is slightly curved downward, like a bowl with its center right where the light is. Uh, and the bowl itself kind of extends out about, looks like about 10 feet to either side. The piles of the room, you can see different bits and bobs of, of, uh, of what look like piles of bone, uh, often a couple of corners, not dissimilar in some ways to the bone piles you'd seen before. Uh, on the far side of the room, you see another, another skeleton standing guard, or in, in that particular way of, 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 a, of a creature standing guard anyway. It's hard to tell because they're mostly immobile and don't really have much emotion to them. Um, let's see. From there, that's pretty much all you see. And does the skeleton... In How big is... Sorry. Um... How big is the crystal? You said it's floating two feet off the ground, but... Yeah, it's probably about the size, size... Of, a, about the size of a football. Okay. It seems thematically so appropriate. It's theoretically with it's the heart of a crystal lady. Um, th in thinking that, it would be about the right size because she was quite large. It, it, it's difficult to really determine, especially from that distance. Uh, I'm going yeah. to assume all of you have moved around the corner because otherwise you wouldn't see it at all. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, furthermore, um, it is sort of ensconced in the... Um, silver wires and sort of metallic metallic banding that seem to be holding it in place. Is that what this thing is? That's what uh, this thing. Yep. Cool. So, so that's going to shut out. Clockwinder, is that you? From within the room, and sort of reverberating all around, and as you kind of step closer to the edge, you can kind of see um, a long shaft that leads off just behind you, uh, or just to your right, uh, Medric. Uh, mm -hmm. about, about even from where you are, you can actually see tendrils of, uh, of magical energy sort of swirling and heading down and out through the, the, to the sort of southwest in this particular diagram. Um, the rumble of sound seems to come from everywhere around at once until you realize that it's sort of like laughter, but laughter that's that's emanating not from any one spot from the whole room. There's a, a, a hey, moment. Silas. And I'll point out the manage, the magical energies to Silas point everyone's going southwest ish. Um, what do you suppose that does? I don't know. So the, the the magical energies were coming from what? They seem to be starting right about here, right even with the door, at least as far as you can see. There seems to be a gap there. There's nothing in particular, say, right here, but you can see the tendrils sort of forming uh, about uh, here and then, and then spreading downward towards the southwest. After a few moments of this sort of rumbling sound, um, something seems to resolve itself. Uh, the sound becomes somewhat coherent. And uh, you hear within your mind, uh, Silas, uh, an answer in what seems to be at first halting common, but then more confident. The voice is uh, clear and uh, masculine, um, amused, and confident. Clockwinder. What an amusing name. A useful specimen, to be sure, above most of your kind. Tell me, why do you think you can just come here? Do you wish to witness the rebirth of the Titans? Silas is going to turn to Annie and Medrick and say, is he speaking into your head too? You no. You not hear anything. Okay. I don't know if that's Clockwinder, but Clockwinder is definitely one of his agents. Uh, he's wondering why we're here if we want to see the, the resurrection of the Titans. The Titans. Do I know anything about the Titans? Make a religion check. All right. They were an ancient football team. 
It would be 14. weird if today everything I ended up doing sort of turned into a metaphoric football game, given yeah. <laughs> apparently there's one happening. I heard that, uh, like the season finale of the football. There's something. Sure. I'm not a football guy. Sports. Sports. Uh, <laughs> The when he says Titans, um, the the name has some resonance for you, um, uh, Medrick. Um, mm-hmm. You can recall some of the early lessons that were sort of historical lessons when you entered uh, the following of Ignis. Um, from the Ignian perspective, the Titans were formidable forces that once challenged the gods for dominance, but were destroyed. At least the legends mostly said destroyed. Uh, you did find one reference that said exiled and not destroyed. The Titans. The re- As you watch, the, the figure continues. It hasn't really paid much attention to you, but the figure continues. Uh, uh, adjusting some things, tightening a wire, and this third uh, uh, cog, which was spinning and sort of standing upward, s- descends into the floor like the other two here and here have done. When it does so, uh, all of you can see the energy sitting right beside you and kind of flowing off in this this uh, southwestern direction seem to gain a few extra tendrils of power. Does it seem... Okay, it's connected... The heart is connected by silvery wires. Do we see anything flowing out of the heart, or just it's connected? There's nothing visible that you can see. No. Okay. Uh, it's bathing the room in this in this sort of cerulean light, but that's about it. Um, again, connected by the silvery wires, and those seem to be spreading out uh, below it and wrapped across the floor, but it's hard to see from this angle. Silas, is that the heart? I think so. I could Maybe offer you. Comes to uh, uh, Silas's head. I can offer you to sit by my side. Your mistress would do well. But if you oppose me, I will destroy her like many others. Hmm. I smash the heart. You move closer? Yes. Okay. Um, as you do, the, the figure in the, in, the, uh, in the cloak kind of turns towards you. Um, we're going to roll initiative because in no way was this a surprise round. <laughs> um, just a second as I reset the... icon. Yeah, just a second. I need to reset the timer or reset the turn counter. Okay, now we're ready to go. Mind adding me to the thing I rolled before? Excellent. I can do. Let's see. Where did you go? Actually, here. I'll just re roll and then I'll be on it. And I rolled the same thing. <laughs> wow. That's a good roll. <laughs> Let's see. Norma was like, oh, wait, I can just roll myself and then fix it. Uh, I apologize. I am uh, experiencing quite a bit of lag, so it's taking me a little bit of time to step through these processes. So to bear with me. Uh, let's see. And I think that's it for now. So we have Medric, Silas, and Annie go into descending order. So I will allow you to make an action. It's not a surprise action. Uh, but how do you try to destroy the heart? Well, he has a staff. He's going to charge the staff and swing at the... Uh, well, he'll booming blade the uh, heart. He's going to aim directly for it. Okay. Didn't regulus that need that. <laughs> Go ahead and make a uh, a strike roll. What regulus did need possibly to be removed from our world... She said she'd prefer it be destroyed than in his hands. Uh, which one? Uh, there we go. This one. 25 to hit. 
Okay. Very close to a critical. As you move there and swing towards the heart, it does feel as though a force field is hit right at the barrier between two of these uh, between two of these mm-hmm. cogs, uh, and that seems to take the hit. It reverberates around. You can now see that there's a sort of uh, pentagram shaped uh, 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 force field around the center part. So was I kept moving between the the two? You basically moved as far as you have there. If you'd moved any further, you would have actually run directly into it. Okay. Um, but I will, I will, it's not a surprise round, but I do give you that one action before everything else kicks off. Annie, you see uh, Silas stride forward and immediately try to strike at the center of this thing, but seems to be held back by an invisible barrier. Um, well, then I can, that is the dot, not me. <laughs> I'll move the dot into the center of the room here and see if I can, if I can do that. Nope, I grabbed Annie too. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So, here. Uh, let's go. Uh, I'll move to here. Okay. And uh, I would like to shoot an arrow at this guy. Okay. I'm pretty sure he would prefer to not have an arrow shot at him, but uh, that's not up to him. So I was started combat and uh, hit, hit a force field. I do physical damage. So. This is my logic. <laughs> hmm. If I can find... Nineteen. Oh, that's definitely a hit. A most palpable hit. Eight damage. As you recall, the uh, way these things are loosely uh, bolted together, piercing damage doesn't do nearly as much as you might hope. There's no flesh to actually pierce, but it does rattle around in the rib cage and does actually uh, uh, break off one of the ribs uh, as it uh, now seems to be a little bit lopsided from the center. Uh, and I would like to bonus action, uh, do these pillars, they, they seem to be part of the situation knowing the past situations have been like this. So I I will describe them again. Um, they are essentially, um, cogs, which are about, uh, four feet wide. They are slightly okay. spinning. Um, they have what looks like a shaft attaching them to the floor. Uh, two of them, this one and this one, have descended into uh, the floor itself. Oh, the other, okay. The other three are, are sort of slowly spinning. He was working on this particular one when you guys entered. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to actually dash a bonus action. Go back here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, did I give it away in the labeling? I guess you might realize this might be a Taraz. Uh, let's see. No, what is he? Not in labeling. Oh, well, that's good. I shouldn't have told you that. Um, <laughs> I've been reading. I've been reading Harry Potter. Now I want all I want to say is I, I, I not have told you that. Um, <laughs> Let's see, what is he going to do? I know what he's going to do. Um, he pauses for a moment. So be it. You have made your choice. Now you will play with my pets. And gestures sort of northwesterly towards the pile of bones that's sitting up there. The pile of bones starts to clatter and clang and starts to skitter across the floor. Let's see, where does it want to go? I think it wants to go... Uh, well, actually, I'll roll initiative for it to see when it goes. Do, do, do. I have too many keyboards. Here we go. None of those are the things I wanted. Pardon me. One moment, please. There we go. All right. And appropriately enough, it goes last. Okay. 
the medric, you see it uh, kind of stir and spin. And um, what you kind of notice is that no body is being formed out of this. It seems mm -hmm. as though the bones themselves are all sort of loosely connected together and start to start to form almost uh, like a large insect, insect with several uh, a dozen limbs, if you will, all connected loosely in this sort of web of bones. Uh, it begins to That's shake. That's not good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Medric, you're up. Right. And there are, are both piles rising up and... Just the one for the creatures. Okay. Well, the shield's gonna light up. Whoosh. Okay. And the other skeleton that Annie hit. Does it look very bad right now or I mean it's looking relatively rough. It's hard to see entirely through the entirety of what's happening inside. But it does look like its its sort of center is off a little bit. As some of its ribs were broken, maybe one of its support struts internally were broken. All right. Well, it's going to get sacred flame. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. That guy. That is a deck save. Uh, I guess a two hit. Just let me double check. No, say the uh, flame is a uh, dex check. Dex save. Okay. okay. Dex save. So that's first to 13. It got a 15, actually. Damn it. So it manages yeah. to angle the, the broken bits of itself in just the right way right. where the flame kind of shoots out, out, out its back without actually hurting it all that much. That was a bit of your move and an action. What else would you like to do? Oh, it's a bonus action as well because you activated the shield. Yeah. I will stand defensively, or is that a bonus action to do? That would be an action. That's an action. Uh -huh. okay. I'll go closer to that pile. Okay. The skeleton's turns. Let's see here. Uh, pretty sure that it can get... Hmm, actually. Move off to one side. Uh, actually, Annie, from where you are and you start to step into that, I didn't realize exactly where you stood. Um, you do notice that there's a sort of shift in energy. Um, I'll say you're right on the edge of it because you would have noticed as it starts to pull you down the, the uh, hallway. Oh, so it's pulling me down that way. Okay. Um, and you kind of get the sense that while the energy is not... is is. It sort of starts there. It is a, it definitely an outward-directed energy that moves further and further down and seems to pick up strength as it moves further down. Cool. Uh, those two skeletons are there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, one of them will, will run up to you, but that's all they can do right now. The other one here will run up to Medric. Again, all they can really do. And this one, I think, can just get... Yeah, get to there and then move around towards Silas. Although they're really slow and kind of awkwardly moving, uh, but intent. So there's that. Uh, let's see, this swarm now. In front of you, Medric, you see the uh, bones kind of um, shifting until they sort of... It feels almost as though they're, they're it's sort of an animal, but maybe with human-level intelligence, it's kind of hard to to uh, truly understand uh, but it seems to be wanting to wrap itself around you it's going to try and overwhelm this is a dexterity saving throw as the web of bones passes over you had to be dex well that's a fail uh, strength sorry strength Wait. or dex um, well that's a failure it's, it's, it's a grapple yeah. Ooh, a natural one is not good you are you are bound by it. You take eight points of bludgeoning damage, one necrotic damage. Um, you are restrained. All physical skill checks and attacks are at disadvantage. Um, you can feel it starting to tighten around you as well, uh, holding you that in was place. Eight points in total. Eight. Nine points in total. Uh, the reason I give them separately is if you have any resistances, but I don't think you do at this point. And you are bound. Uh, that leaves it to Silas. 
Okay. Well, first thing is Silas is going to attempt to smash the damaged skeleton. Okay. It objects. Uh, actually, maybe it actually objects. Uh, there's mm, 11. Yes, does. unfortunately it misses. Um, as you batter into it, it, it breaks off a piece of rib, but it doesn't care about that particular piece of rib, apparently. And bonus action to hex the dude in the middle. Okay. I'm missing his intelligence. So any intelligence checks that are not saves or attacks, he has disadvantage on. And there's no save for that, right? Nope. He also takes necrotic if I hit him, but that's not likely to be a, an issue. Yet. Okay. Uh, I will. I knew. Okay. So these two over here are the ones that are down. That's right. The ones nearest to Medric. Okay. So Silas is going to try to walk through there and see if the shield is up there. As soon as you step away from the skeleton, it will take an attack at you. Uh, let's see. It yep. actually has a sword. I don't think a seven hits. Um, you can feel resistance, um, but you can make a, a strength check. Yeah. Or athletics if you have it. Uh, they're the same for me, so 16. Ooh, oh. That's pretty good. You actually are able to push through it, and you find yourself on the inside of this particular barrier. At least you're pretty sure you're in, in the inside because you're no longer feeling it. Yeah. Uh, Silas will... Uh, say uh, you can move through the barrier um, and then he's going to uh, leave the barrier because uh, he wants to provide a, another target for the other skeletons so that uh, another, doesn't get a... Another strength check to try to move back through it. Okay. You cannot move back nope. through it. You're trapped on the inside. Okay. Uh, That's as it you pass, I should say, as you pass through the barrier, it does feel like it chills you to the very core of you. Um, you get the impression that this barrier um, is not only magical, but actually specifically intended to repel the living. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I'll let them know that they can push in. I don't know if they can shoot in. Uh, and Medrick needs help. Actually, the, two, needs, but... the two of you see, uh, see Silas pass through the barrier. He appears to be more fuzzy. He turns back to try to say something. You see his mouth move, but you do not hear anything. And Silas seems to be stuck. Cool. Uh, Annie. Great. Uh, actually, on. also within, you will hear, uh, sort of, sorry, you will hear constant chatter. You'll also hear the machines are a lot louder on the inside. Mm. And I thought it was loud on the outside. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to move myself away from that barrier. Okay. You do have a skeleton kind of standing right beside you. Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll move around that. Okay. That way. It turns to face you. Yep. Uh, pull on that barrier because it's sketchy. Um, and I will give it a stab with vice. Probably not. Yeah, unfortunately, these are missing too many pieces. You would have made a very critical hit if it had organs. Yep. Uh, and. It's Medrick who's stuck right now. Yep. Uh, well, he seems uh, to be surrounded, yeah. So I'm going to... Um, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the player is like... Ah! Try tickling on... Pushing on his ribs. Um, Try tickling advantage. it. Advantage. <laughs> I'll tickle it, all right. Uh, and that is advantage on... Is that all rolls? I keep forgetting for some reason. It's, it's the help action. 
Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Within the center, the um, robed figure turns to you. And now you can kind of see it in more detail. You realize that some of the detail was actually held back by the the uh, 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 the glaze, if you will, of the barrier that you just passed through. Um, and its its head is not entirely visible, but you see glowing red eyes from sort of within the darkness of the. Uh, actually, you have dark vision, so you'll actually see the the full face. It does look to be a skeletal face um, with glowing dark eyes inside. Um, there does seem to be some sort of gloves on the hands, but as you kind of, as it moves up and moves its hands, you hear a sort of mechanical whir and, and twitch coming from within the, the gloves themselves. Um, within your mind, you hear um, a, uh, a, a voice, again, clear. No movement of the body itself, but the voice is quite clear. Um, let's see. You are bold. Your mistress chose you well. Too bad she will have to choose again. Your petty tricks will do you no good here. And you see him, you see it raise its hand and kind of shift and twist inside. There's a little burst of magical energy and you feel the hex fall away. Cool. Uh, that's its action for now. Medric. You're bound up within this thing, and you can feel it squeezing tighter and tighter. Channel divinity. Okay. Ooh, man. What kind of channel divinity are you trying? Uh, light, probably. I just had it. Where is it? Light, uh, the glow of dawn, I think it's called, or blessed light of yeah, dawn. glory of midday. Glory of midday. That's it. Wait, what's your one again? Um, I don't have your sheet in front of me, so I can't. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have my, I had my sheet in pretty far ago. Uh, is, it, is it on the roll twenty one or is it in an email? Uh, both should be there. The, um, uh, there is a Kmar of Ignis handout, so I'm just gonna look at it here quickly. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, nope, that's level fifteen. You're definitely not there yet. Um, Glory of Midday, and you also, you have the, the, the original one as well, the sort of turn undead one as well. Oh, okay. Um, but you can do, um, okay. Uh, the yeah. mighty aura of Ignis explodes from you. You're taking your action to do this. Uh, magical darkness within 30 feet of you is dispelled. There's no magical darkness. A uh, hostile creature within 30 feet of you can make a constitution saving throw or take radiant damage. Okay. Uh, the 2d6 plus for level 6. Let's see what that is. 21 in its constitution save for the skeletal swarm. Um, the one skeleton makes a 15. Damn What's it. my target? 13. 13, okay. Uh, the other so one have to... by uh, uh, the other one by uh, Annie gets a 14 as well. So all three of those take... Uh, uh, damage. Oh, and there's one more, which was over where. Yeah, they all take half damage, and it does not seem to penetrate the shield. Okay. And as a bonus so action, take, can uh, I? What? So they take seven radiant each, or fire. What it was? Uh, radiant. It's, it's radiant. It doesn't have anything there, so. Which I think is one shot kill. Ones are here. Uh, close, but not quite. Um, it does do a pretty big number on those skeletons, though, because they're not actually all that tough, as you may remember. But they are all still standing, as is the creature which has you surrounded. All right. And uh, do I get a deception to summon uh, Shul Weapon? Yeah, uh, it's yes. not a spell. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, it's a channel yeah. divinity. So You're limited by the number you can do in a day, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
uh, yes, you, you kind of explode with bright light across the entire space, which is, uh, well, uh, brilliant, I guess you might say. Just need a um, flaming hammer token. That does discern, yep. yes, it's only at enemies, so yeah. I was going to say, it doesn't actually blind any, because that would be really annoying. Yep. <laughs> and then close your eyes. That would suck. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and you wanted to summon your spiritual weapon as well? Oh, yes, I have your spiritual weapon. Do, do, do. Um, and it can attack. Yep. <laughs> do, 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 do. Spiritual mm -hmm. weapon. Where is it going to be? Uh, to the well, that's Whoa. a large hammer. Yep. <laughs> and what level are you summoning it at? Uh, two. Because you can summon it at higher levels as more damage. Yeah, I know, but I yeah. feel like I might need some healing at a high level. Yep. Right. So I'll put it right uh, next to the skeleton, the one above Annie. You should have control over it now, so you can put it in the right place. It's a little okay. bigger than it should be, but that's just the way that. It's another consequence of taking the uh, taking the uh, uh, grid system off as it starts to get really rear with sizes and stuff. It doesn't have a detailed size. Okay, so it appears right there behind you and behind the beside the skeleton. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little crowded there. And it will swing. Oh, yeah. that is most. And it has advantage. Uh, oh, wait. Dish for that crit. I guess you're still directing it. That's no, kind of weird. Two 19s. Yeah. <laughs> well, it hits twice. No, it doesn't. It only hits once. But it no. hits like it hit twice. It looks like it hit twice. How much damage? Plus two. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, that... as, it, as it cracks it into small, tiny little pieces, and it disintegrates uh, behind you. Uh, and can I still move it? Uh, no. You can only move it on your bonus action. It was a bonus okay. action to to uh, to summon. Yep. Um, all right. All right. The skeletons. This guy will go over here and pile on with his buddy onto Annie. Um, one of them is going to use a sword. The other one is going to use. Oh yeah, shoot! They actually have two attacks. Oh, they haven't actually attacked yet. It's only been reactions. That's why. Uh, but yes, each of them are going to attack Annie twice with the uh, one with short sword and then punch. So the uh, first one, 16 to hit. Um, so for five points of piercing damage. Then with the sort of doubled over punch, 21 to hit. Two more Eesh. points of damage. The second one who just came over, Dang. 21 to hit. Jeez. Uh, so sword punch, sword punch. Oh, fortunately, not a, not advantage on that. So only four points of damage on the last one, but that's that's a lot. That's um, yep, that's fifteen points in total in that round from those two skeletons. Um, now the swarm. Uh, the swarm is going to squeeze its bound target. Uh. Does a 15 squeeze uh, Medric? No, the armor just repels that. Yep, your your armor is creaking but managing to hold. Isn't the swarm the one that he just killed? No, no. Oh, no that was the skeleton, skeleton standing behind him. Oh. I be able to hold me as I was bound. <laughs> I don't think the hammer could have taken the swarm like out in one shot either. So. It would be surprising. You guys have rolled damage far higher than I expected sometimes, so I'm not exactly saying it's not going to happen, but uh, let's see. That was the swarm's only maneuver. Silas, on the inside. Huh. I'll ask him back in his head. What? So you intend to face the gods again? Yeah, um, what's I intend to finish what I have started. I was merely delayed. I don't know. Silas gestures at the body and says, Looks like you've been 
toned down a little. And Silas will attempt to smash the heart now that he's inside the barrier. All right. Uh, I just need to find the right sheet. There we go. <laughs> oh, that is a yeah, good strike. 23. Nice. Uh, Hex is not up, but uh, it's a clean blade, so that's, well, 13 bludgeoning and one thunder. Uh <laughs> Okay, I do have to calculate this. Magical budget. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, actually, in that case, a large crack forms in the side of the uh, of the uh, crystal, of the heart. Um, I have to set this. Ugh. Did something wrong. There we go. Yeah, a large crack forms in the, in the side of the heart. Uh, brilliant light spills out through the crack, through the crack, I should say. Um, and uh, he looks a little bit alarmed as he looks sharply over to it, surprised at your bold action. Uh, I look see. back at him and say, you probably didn't have such obvious weakness. Uh, can I do anything with my bonus action that would be useful? Uh, don't think I can yet. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think it is a useful bonus action. So that will be it. We'll stay inside the uh, barrier. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. Too many windows. Seems like a song. Um, Annie, you're up. Hello. Um, I wanna, I wanna hit the one that hurt me the worst. Okay. I forget if that was the first or second one. Yes. Um, the one that's already damaged. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the one that's already damaged first, actually. Okay. It's a little bit. That's this guy. Uh, yes, I, I will slash. Any would remember the whole slashing, not not piercing thing. Absolutely. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Been a week. Uh, 14. Uh, 14 hits. Cool. And indeed, uh, by slashing through, you cut through several of the silver strands severing whatever connection it had to be menu moving and sort of tumbles into the spot where it lit, where it was standing. Um, and I will, now that the player understands better what's going on, I'll, I'll try to give Medric some advice on getting out of the swarm that he's in. Get okay. okay. the player's brain not here. <laughs> Have you tried <laughs> not being bound by the swarm? Have you I tried don't know. Enough to step back? That just flecked it across your mind. So I decided to Medric on. Rah! Um, okay. Also, Al. <laughs> <laughs> also, Al. All right. Don't worry. After all this fight is done, we'll have a way to help heal people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Some of these things aren't calculated on the sheet, so I have to do a little math. Um, no, nah, that's no fun. Yeah. All right. Oh, there. Push it is. use. So, yeah, it's it. Accounting is easy. Uh, <laughs> doing D and D math is hard. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So, uh, why not? Um, you don't know what power you're meddling with, but I think you should find another place to be. Does a 28 hit you? 
Uh, <laughs> is that for Silas? Uh, that is yeah. for uh, that is for uh, uh, Silas. Yes. Yes. As he casts a magical spell, um, around wow. Silas uh, gathers a considerable sort of black aura, uh, and then in an instant, Silas vanishes. Silas, you find yourself floating in an endless world of water. There's nothing around you that you can see, but it's peaceful, and far off in the distance, you think you can hear the mother's voice calling to you, but the words are indistinct. So there's no save? Uh, it is plane shift, which is just a yeah. spell attack. Uh, oh, sorry, it is a charisma saving throw. Pardon me. I there thought there we were, go. Yeah, makes more sense. Uh, okay, charisma saving throw, and uh, has magical resistance. So I have advantage. Whew. Uh, I have to do. Uh, well, I got seventeen. Might not be his DC though. Uh, He's probably pretty good. Actor. Actually, it does not meet his DC. Uh, and indeed, you do vanish. Uh, as all of you see. Silas, in a flash of darkness, does that make any sense? Uh, vanish from within the circle. Uh, that is his turn. Uh, whoops, wrong button. Uh, and I didn't do those. Medric. All right. Getting Annie's advice of, have I ever tried just not being bound by a skeleton thing? I'll try to break free. Okay. <laughs> that would be advisable. What kind of save is it? Uh, strength or dex saving throw. Um, okay, let's make that strength. You do have disadvantage on... Hang on now. On but physical skill advantage. checks and attacks. So, um, actually, it's, not a, it's a saving throw. It doesn't apply. Weirdly enough, I should have probably thought that over. Uh, that is enough, as you kind of, uh, you follow <laughs> Annie's advice. Have you tried I not being my bound? <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, bits and pieces of it fall away around you and kind of drag themselves, kind of like the, you, you kind of broke the strings at one side and the rest of it sort of collapses in on itself and reforms in front of you. Okay. So the hammer will go close to it and swing. Okay. Oh, that is not a hit. It's the wall, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you kind of like, aha! I've got to go out and bang, 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 bang as it tries to make the backswing, and then you realize it doesn't need a backswing; it's a magical hammer. But by then, right, the effect right. has gone by. That That's was your bonus nice and, and your uh, and your action. Yeah. Are you going to move? Uh, it's going to get an attack of opportunity if I do move, so... Uh. Yeah, I'll hold it off here, because otherwise it's going to go after Annie. Maybe. Oh, actually, I think that was the wrong spell I was looking at anyway. It was the... The effect I wanted, but not the one I was actually going for. Um, yeah, okay. It was not uh, the spell that I, I don't think I said the spell, which is good because that wasn't the one I thought it was. Which no. one? No, no, nothing, nothing. No effect. I mean, the spell changed, just just uh, just the one that he cast was. It's like that's not the right one. That's way too severe. All right, uh, and you. Sorry, you don't move. No, I'll just pull off the bone pile here. Okay. Skeleton, one lone skeleton still survives. Uh, that is in front of Annie. And it will attempt um, in its mindless way to stab and punch. First the stab, 16 hits. And then the punch, 13 misses, I think. As it kind of overestimates. And you, you know, skeletons don't gloat, but you kind of feel like it was trying to gloat. Uh, yep. And then the swarm. The swarm does not like not being uh, being knocked back. So let's see. 
what is it going to try to do? Well, the swarm to learn about boundaries. Uh, let's see. It really doesn't know much about boundaries. It's going to try that again. It's going to swarm over you once more. That is like its main thing. Uh, so again, it is Ready a uh, strength or dexterity saving throw. Eh. Unfortunately, you're once again caught up in its net. Five bludgeoning damage, one necrotic damage. As once again, it sort of flows. It sort of flows over you this time, kind of winding its way around your legs in a different angle than it had before. It's just trying to hug you. It it really is. Uh, let's see. Do not consent to hug. Medrick starts screaming, "Badge, bad touch, and flaming everything." <laughs> <laughs> Silas, you're floating yes. in the midst of endless water. Silas's first thought is, oh. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, that's, a, that's a good thought to have right now. You said... Oh, and bench for water? <laughs> no. <laughs> but that would be a good one. Um you said he could faintly hear Mother Hydra's bees. It sounds it sounds familiar, yeah. Off in the distance, but indistinct. Well, he's gonna swim in that direction, and his action basically is gonna be to concentrate on that. Okay. To try to draw it to him or or focus on it so he can head to it. All right. What? Uh, let's call this a skill challenge. What skill is he going to use? And remember, you don't have to have a trained skill in these particular ones. It just means you're falling back to your 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 raw um, stat bonus. Hmm. Uh, the focus is probably closest to his arcana skill. Okay. He's trying to show with his mind. And this one will will be different skills each time. It's mm -hmm. always good to start with the, the best if you have it. Uh, 15. 15. Okay. Um, as you kind of are, are, are reaching out, um, because you're not seeing any water anywhere, like you don't surface either. There is no other than the water. Um, there can be only one explanation for where you are. You are on the infinite plane of water. This... Mm -hmm is probably the native plane of Mother Hydra. Yep. This is interesting, but I need to get back to my friends. Uh, so yeah, basically he's... Let's see. That's about all he can do. I mean, he swims fast-ish. Or at least he swims, but... Um, but yeah, he's going to keep... Uh, trying to focus on that direction and head in or reach out to her with his mind. Okay. It's like, mother. Mother, I am here. Okay. I need you to send me home. Um, the red skeleton. Oh, I'm lost. <laughs> or the car. <laughs> okay. Silas's adventures in midwater. Annie. Oh, uh, I will once again um, doing some math. Um, yeah, I am going to lose my uh, steady. What is it? Steady. Mm -hmm. uh, which. Is movement and a bonus action and slash with vice with advantage. All right. At the dude in front of me, because. Kind of imagine you line up um, and kind of, kind of crouch down a little bit, and then heartbeat, 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 strike. Yo. Um, deep breath. And your first instinct was right, is the advantage to truly really do you any good. Um, but you definitely hit. Uh, and uh, I have hit points. So it takes the full 10. 
yeah, you do more than enough um, as you kind of know where to strike within these things. And again, kind of end up severing a lot of those those silver threads. You hear the sort of satisfying pang, 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 pang as the tension is released inside. And the creature seems like it's mid-swing to hit you once, and more, once more and just sort of falls apart in different pieces that clatter around you in this sort of loose uh, 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 mock version of a classroom skeleton now. Uh, and a, a turnaround to face what's going on over here. Okay. And that's what I do, because I can't move. All right. Uh, let's see. You turn around to face the center, and the creature at the, in the center seems weirdly distinct, pulls back its the, the, the hood of its robe, and now you can see that there is indeed a skeleton head underneath, glowing red eyes in the center. But you can also see that as it moves down, the head itself is attached uh, to some sort of metal uh, structure underneath the robe. And it bears its eyes down on you. Your friend is gone. You will do no more. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. This is against magic, if that makes any difference. Nope. Your, your DC is 18. Oh, you succeed. You feel the magic wash over you, and for a moment, your limbs start to lock up. What does Annie find in her mind or in her heart or in her soul that prevents her from being paralyzed? I've got to get back home eventually. Okay, so thoughts of home wash over you as you're... I can't stay here. <laughs> All right. You shake off the effect, and you can see the uh, the creature in the robe's head tilt slightly in respect. Uh, now it's going to take its turn. Uh, let's see. So be it. Then you shall die here. And it points out with a, a, a gloved hand, kind of the finger pops up towards you. And let's see, I think that's a to hit roll. Yes. Uh, oop, too many buttons. Don't have. Uh. And see if this misses you too. Oh, 13. Oh. It rolled a one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a natural one. I live. <laughs> as a, as a uh, beam of cold light that's passes terrifying. right by you. That's amazing. That's it. You know, after having a really so, suffering round from the skeletons, you're now taking on the bad guy and just like, whoop, hip, hop, no so problem. So what's the effect of the natural one on his attack roll? Um, no effect. The spell just, just fizzles out. Um, if it was one of us, we'd lose our turn or something. I mean, he's kind of <laughs> lost his turn because he's shocked. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, no. Uh, actually, no. The the energy goes right right by you and flows into the piling up energy that you're seeing uh, down the shaft, uh, Annie. And uh, you see the spell kind of reverberate around the energy, collecting the energy as it goes into a swirl of, of cold uh, and uh, 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 frost and ice form along the, the exterior of this tube. And seem to line it. You actually see some of the walls start to start to collapse a little bit under the energy. The frost passes quickly, but that's that's there for now. Medric, I don't need the skeletons anymore. You deleted them. You killed them all. You deleted them all. Yes. Yay! All right. Uh, sacred flame again. All right. On the thing, which is around me. All right. So, see, uh, 13, it has to save. Save. Uh, is it a dex? Is that what it was? I think so. Okay. Yes. A nine. It does not save. So it takes 2d8. It is in your, your square, but I'm not putting that on the map just because that's way too much work. I try to keep them separate. Um, 15. It is 2d8. Odd, right? Um, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't say at the moment, but... Uh, I had it in front of me, but then I just forgot. I will have it in a second. Uh, it is 1d8, yeah, but you're at 5th level, so it's 2d8. 
Yeah, two D eight plus your yep. wisdom modifier. Uh. No. Plus wisdom, so it should be plus two. no. Oh, actually, sorry, yeah. No, it doesn't add your wisdom modifier. Just the plus. Okay. Just so, the, so it's just so it's twelve. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I applied it yet. So there we go. Uh, yes, and it then, uh, it sort of glows around you and kind of flows around you, feeling pretty good, actually. Poof. And then the hammer will take a swing. Yeah. Right then. That's my third one of the day. Okay, roll again. Oh no! You guys wanted me to to, to have ones have a special effect, so does no, that that's hit a you? 20. Well, yeah. You take half damage. Damn it! As your hammer, as you're like, yeah, just do all the spells real close to me. That'll be fine. Wham! That was not fine. Ow! It's hard to navigate with this thing kind of clawing all over your body and all over your face. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's just three points. It's not so bad. Sorry, that's the, the sacred, uh, sorry, the uh, spiritual hammer? Yes. Yeah. It should be 1d plus 2. Oh, okay, I'll roll again. Hmm, okay. Points. Oh, yeah, spiritual weapon. That's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. I knew what it was last turn, and then I just dropped. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, you kind of end up slamming yourself and looking at your hammer. Your hammer looks kind of uh, kind of upset with itself, as far as hammers go. Yeah, um, the swarm will continue to squeeze around you. Uh, does a 24 hit? Uh, so, so, two bludgeoning, four, four necrotic, six in total. And it just it chooses not to move. Silas, you're moving along and you can kind of feel like you've got a direction to go. You feel a pull far away, but you feel something familiar. Difficult mm. to orient yourself in an infinite plane of water, mind you. Is up that way? Is down that way? Is this, yeah, that's why is he's sideways. He's focusing mentally. Um investigation okay try to put the pieces together and figure out again what the kind of like navigation oh, wait. And not the, the physical tools I mean he's trying to navigation right uh, so could he roll that for trying to sort of triangulate the point that he gets closer uh, I will say that navigation is probably going to be at disadvantage because there's no landmarks Okay. Unless you can figure out a way where it could be used, where there, in the case with no landmarks. No, I'll just use investigation then. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, Seven. it's strike against nope. you. Um, the the problem again is that there's nothing particularly physical around you, and that's making it difficult to to make any judgment. You kind of turn around to look to see where you are and where you've come from and how much distance you've traveled. And then you have a difficult time actually judging if you're still going the same direction you were just a second ago. That's why he's not focusing on anything physical around him. He's just trying to focus on the the mental connection, the voice. Right, but but in the case of the the failed role, there's there's a consequence basically of of you got distracted by the physical around you, and that that threw you off for a moment. Um, yep, Annie. Okay. Piles of bones around you, and a, a pile of bones currently squeezing Medric, who seems to be hitting himself. You're not really sure why it's making him hitting himself, but. Yep. Uh, I am going to use my bonus action to crack my set uh, pistol. pistol thing. Okay. Yeah. 2d4 4 plus 2, right? Uh, 2d4 plus 2. Yep. So seven okay. points restored. Looking not as bad. You said to snort a little crystal. Now you're fine. <laughs> um, it's crystal methic. Crystal med. That's it. Crystal med. That's it. Um, 
And I will take a gamble at shooting an arrow uh, into the space uh, to try to. I'll try to hit the heart. Okay. okay. Make an attack roll. Oh, that's definitely 22. it. I guess the force field. As as I was about to say, uh, as the arrow flies in that particular direction, you think mm, there was that force field. Is it going to move through it? And as it does, it encounters no resistance nice. and strikes the strikes the crystal. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Um, you see beside it the the uh, the skeleton figure looks somewhat alarmed by what just happened. Um, and I am going to um, just me, the player wanting to, yeah, I'm going to step in that corner there. <laughs> Try to get some cover from that corner of the wall. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. In this way to... I have to remember what all these spells do because I don't have uh, I don't have them all instantly on my list here. So I do apologize for the delays. It's me looking up spells. Um, okay, that's not that. Um, okay. Um, as oh, actually, wait. Hmm. I'll do that one first. All right. As the creature looks in your direction, and the skeleton doesn't have much movement it can make in its face for emotion, but there's a way that it sort of tilts its head back, and the the bright red glowing spots of its eyes. Um, seem to 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 move and intently stare in your direction, uh, and you feel in your mind a a sharpened sense. Make an intelligence saving throw. Uh, actually, I know those. Mm, good. Hey, there you go. Uh, and you feel the the shard that was going to to burrow into your brain uh, wipe away. Amazingly, you are apparently immune to all spells, which is kind of amusing. Uh, so, <laughs> the rogue can't dodge any physical attacks, but <laughs> my brain. Uh, let's see, uh, that would be repeating itself. So instead, oh, actually, my brain just remembered uncanny dodge, guys. I forget that that's a thing because usually get stuck <laughs> in AO. Um, doesn't help you against psychic things, but uh, you you see the fr the frustration register on the uh, on the creature's sort of body language, uh, and it sort of uh, raises its hand and and sort of back uh, hands uh, out towards you, and little motes launch from each of its fingers. Um, this is good old fashioned magic missile, which kind of feels like at this point. It's terrible. I'm resistant to four damage. I know, I know, which is even more funny. Uh, so let's see. Actually, you're into magic missiles. Yes. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you are. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, as they strike, as they strike near you and kind of vanish into the brooch, I think it is right. The brooch of shielding. Yep. Yep. Uh, as they vanish into you, that is hilarious. He's not I having stare a great day. <laughs> I just means to get more desperate. Uh, Medric, you're up. All right. Sacred flaming again. Actually, yeah, I don't finish your way. So, yeah, sacred flame. Okay. So I had to heal some. No worries. <laughs> uh, right, saving throw. Healing is important. Thirteen. 
Uh, dexterity, was it? Sorry, I keep forgetting that. Yes. yes there we go. Oh. Uh, yes, it, it sort of easily moves. And you f it's weird because it's moving against you. It's like it's crawling all over you to avoid your own flame. Uh, it crosses over your eyes at one point. One finger sticks into your ear. It's kind of unfortunately painful. Is that so save craft damage or is it save or... It, uh, it takes save no, no damage. damage. But save. Yeah. Okay, well, hopefully the hair doesn't roll the one this time. Rolls shitty. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I hit it all day. Uh, no, you, you've hit quite a bit, actually. But, uh, okay. I've... well, there's a skeleton that's lying dead behind you. And uh, this thing has already gotten lost some, some hit points. So, yeah, yeah, you've hit stuff. Uh, but unfortunately, this particular time, the the hammer, tr you, you're trying to be more cautious because you don't want to hit yourself again. But unfortunately, you draw a little bit short uh, as the uh, the skeleton kind of moves around you to save itself. Uh, that was, uh, you don't even move, so that was your bonus and action. Uh, it's turn, once again, just to simply squeeze. Roll, roll uh, low. Hits a 20, God. so six points yep. total damage. Silas. Yes. For this, do I have to use a different thing each time or just not twice in a row? I'm going to say different skill each time. They're basically layering. You're using everything you have at your disposal. Nothing new is going to happen using the same skill unless something changes. Um, and I will say skills can also include spells if there's appropriate spells. Don't think you really have much for spells I can use for this. Um, I guess a nature roll. I'll try to pick a water flow or something. That's okay. I like that. Going the right way. Yeah, I'm not trained in anything, so this is not likely to work out well. Unfortunately, you're still kind of moving along, trying to pick out currents, but um, it feels as though the, the water itself sort of responds to you every time you think about a current and you try to chase one. It's like you also diminish it at the same time. Uh, Annie. You can see the increasing frustration on in the way this creature's body has moved. And what's furthermore, kind of because you're paying attention to it, the robe is not moving in a natural way for a body held underneath it. Yep. Um, I will once again shoot an arrow at the... Hmm. I'll shoot one at him, just for shits and giggles. Okay. Twenty-five. Nice. Yep, that definitely hits. But as with most of the the uh, the undead creatures you found so far, uh, it does not seem to do as much as you expect. It sort of hits the robe and sinks in, and then sort of falls usefully to the side. It did seem to hit something, but didn't seem to do a lot of damage. Yep. Let's see. What is he going to do? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, actually, what is that? Oh, can I bonus action, use my bonus action uh, to give Medric the help action? Can indeed. Yeah. I'll do that. Hmm. And I'm actually going to back around this corner here so he, I'm not in line of sight. Um. Oh, actually, I have to check something. Eh. Feels like all of my uh, my mice and keyboards actions are just like I'm like I'm swimming through water. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, and that's what it is in concentration, is it? What is sorry? What he has uh, Silas with? Uh, oh yeah, you're right, actually. Good point. Uh, we will make that particular check. Uh, no, plane shift is not a concentration spell. Uh, Banishment is. 
plane shift has permanently moved me to spot to find my own way back. Well, that's one of the reasons that I looked up the spell because it was not actually plane shift, um, but the effect is is the same. Uh, but in okay. fact, here's the funny part. But in fact, you've you've rattled him enough that uh, he uh, seems to curse in a language you do not recognize, and all of you can audibly hear this curse. This is the only audible sound he's ever made. The voice is cracked and broken. The uh, sound seems like it is mechanical and rusty. Uh, and indeed, uh, Silas reappears <laughs> <laughs> as his concentration was broken. That's a very good point. Thank you very much. Um, that means he's going to change what he's going to do. That, that was me, the player, going, this makes sense. He's directly attacking me. I might as well go out and actually be able to hit him. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's great. Um, actually, nah. He, he could do something, but I'm going to say because of the, the success of numerous attempts to try, or the failure of numerous attempts to try to hurt you, he's not going to just go, no, I succeed anyway. Um, we'll see what else happens instead. Uh, let's see. Um, fine, then I will kill your friends instead. And I need to find that spell. Uh, which would be funny because I suspect... It's funny because I forget all these things. So it's it's kind of like, do I actually remember if this will work or not? I don't. That's perfect. He doesn't know either. Um, when you reappear, uh, 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 Silas... Uh, he looks kind of annoyed, not surprised, but when you reappear, uh, he waves his hand at you and you can feel cold forming around your body. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, is it magic? It is magic, yes. So you have advantage. Oof. Nope. You take six points of cold damage as frost forms around your body. Um, you have disadvantage on the next weapon attack before the end of your next turn. So keep that in mind. Uh, then, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, okay. He'll try that. Um. No, what am I thinking? He doesn't like you. This is what he's going to try. Sorry. Momentarily kind of confused as to what spells he has. Uh, as uh, you see uh, from the other hand now, kind of pull, uh, pulling out and holding it up, his, his fingers kind of creaking into position. A small moat of light, deep red light, seems to emanate from one of his eyes into the hand, and he tosses it down the hallway at... Um, this is probably not going to kill you anyway, but basically tossing it to, to uh, strike that spot as a fireball erupts. So you do get to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, you do get to do it with, I, th do you get, I think, do you get advantage? I know you're going to have half damage if you succeed, right? Because you have the, uh... or wait, do you have that one yet? Uncanny dodge is if she can see the attack coming, she can react to make it half damage. Okay, yeah, that would be the one that would work in this case. But you still have to make a dexterity saving throw. You probably will succeed at that too, which is even more funny. Um, and we've got... It's not hitting you with an attack. It's an AoE. It's evasion. That's... Oh, okay. I, I'm taking the full brunt of this. Uh, well, you can, you can no, still make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, evasion's the uh, AB one. I just looked up on Candy Dodge a little while ago. If if you can see the attack coming, you spend your reaction to take half damage. Yes, but it's when they it's, hit you with an attack. It's not yeah. AO. It is targeted attack. Uh, so you do make the saving throw. That's good. Let's see how bad this gets. So it would have been 34 <laughs> points of damage. It is uh, uh, 17 points of damage, however, as fire erupts in that hallway. And I rolls over you. Uh, that's its turn. Medric, you're up. You can now see All that right. your friend has returned, and a large fireball has just gone off in the direction of your... Time to 
Strength. Uh, with advantage. <laughs> Uh, that is enough. Yeah, you break free of this All thing right. once more. It's the second time you've broken through. through, through so you kind of know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That was my action. Okay, hammer, you got this. Just once, please. Uh, that's a hit. It, it's... Oh my god! For three damage. <laughs> As it, it finally hits solidly in the center of the thing, but unfortunately it wasn't much solidly in the center of this thing. Uh, as it's kind of, kind of uh, it's sort of like you, you break break off the thing and it kind of splashes down, and in the wake of the splash it hits solidly right in the middle, but it's still splashing outward, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, let's see, that is Medric's turn. You are able to move now. Actually, sorry, you make that at the end of your turn so technically you did the thing first oh no you took yeah, an so action gonna, yeah so you have your move it, it, we're gonna have an attack of opportunity anyway so i'm just gonna stay here okay and hope it rolls low next time uh let's see what is it going to do it can do that but it can also do this hmm I think it sees uh, and knows the mind of this of its of its master, and seeing Silas returning that close, it's actually going to leap at Silas. Um, so uh, it is going to immediately try to do the slash at uh, actually do to do. I have to get to the barrier first. Uh, there's no barrier oh, there. No. Yeah. Um, so it leaps over there. Oh. Um, I, uh, cool. it's yeah, yeah, it's not affecting it pretty much next to Medric still. Um, but it will attempt to make a bash attack at you. Oof. Oh no. So it hits, uh, Silas for mm -hmm. seven bludgeoning as a source. It sort of leaps and springs outward and almost like a net, but then kind of comes together, forming this weird sort of version of a cudgel that slams down across you. Uh, that was its spring leap. Uh, Silas, you're up. This creature has not grabbed a hold of you, but it is basically swarming around you. Well, Silas is going to take a crack at the heart again. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's throw up. As disadvantage, but it's a non-moving target, so hopefully he can still hit. Wow, well, definitely hits. Oh, it's a twenty-three. No, uh, four bludgeoning, five thunder. Um. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting oh. it doesn't add that up on that for some reason. Um. Yep, another another crack, and the the uh, the boom of thunder rattles out across the room again, disturbing the. The fellow beside it, who seems to be somewhat attached to the heart, you might say. Mm. Uh, uh, Silas will say, uh, Give up. There's no reason to lose anything to my lady. Well, he actually lose the other. Okay. Um, I will allow an intimidation roll. Given the circumstances, <laughs> natural right, point. Nice. So, so, so as you uh, as you stand there and kind of uh, uh, bash out towards the the heart, it cracks again. A big chunk falls off on one side. Um, you see him look with alarm towards the heart, and as you say that, his head rises back up, and you can see now. Even again, the, the, the skeleton not, not uh, showing much emotion, but there is uncertainty in those eyes. There is desperation in those eyes. There is concern in those eyes. And with that... There's see. anger in Silas's. Uh, let's see. What is he going to do instead? Uh, let's see. Uh... Da -da -da -da. Yeah, probably pure anger at you 
but he'll react with something simpler. I believe that's an attack roll. Just have to see what that looks like. Yes. I don't have spell attack on that sheet for some reason. Just generic spell attack is not included in the thing. Uh, uh, d does a does a does a thirty one hit? Yeesh. No. Um, you believe that? Someday, someday <laughs> that will be true, and I'll be like, really? No. <laughs> um, as cold uh, washes over you, not very much though. Uh, only four points of cold damage. Uh, but your speed is reduced by 10 to the start of your next turn. Oh, remember you had uh, already a um, a disadvantage on that attack. Mm -hmm. Oh, you already calculated. I got a 23 and a 24. Right, so. right. Never mind. Uh, Annie, your turn. As the Hello. flames kind of lick up around the walls there still. You can see that the, the walls themselves have been damaged and some of the machinery is grinding around you. You get the feeling that that was probably not his intention, but... Um, I would like to step and see that person is back, so, um, hmm. no, I'm really hurt, so I'm going to stay by this corner. Um, I would like to shoot another arrow at the heart. Okay. As the arrow flies through the air, no, not impeded any longer by anything. Yep. Try to hit the heart. <laughs> it is probably uh, unfortunately, it kind of glances off the edge of it, flying off into the into the distance. Uh, move or bonus? Um, I will give um, Medric and worm okay all right um, they can do that from here yeah any idea what what annie might have said to to encourage him i mean have you tried not being uh held apparently worked so what's the advice in this case uh, just just hit it with fire um with some desperation beside you, um, Silas, you see uh, him reach out and gesture towards uh, one of the remaining three uh, cogs. Uh, as as he does, a uh, a translucent hand forms over it, uh, turning and twisting some things until it sinks into the floor. Um, you can hear a bit of a grinding sound. Whatever he just did was probably not as eloquent as he meant to do. Uh, but it does sink into the ground, and further, um, the uh, energy in the hallway down below increases. Uh, now you can kind of hear the thrumming also start to spin upward as it spins within the ground. The heart, uh, fractured as it is, starts to give off additional energy and additional light in all directions. But now you can see that yeah, with every pulse, some of it seems to, to shrink downward and move lost in the silver wires beneath. Um, now it's t his turn. Which of these fancy things does he want to do now? Hmm. Sure, let's try that one. Um. He, uh, he claps his hands together over his head, and the fingers start to separate off uh, and float around him, spinning and surrounding him and uh, all around him in, in, a, in a radius. Let me just uh, see if I can draw a radius around him. No, well, it's not a circle, but it'll do. In that area, um, clouds of shards of metal uh, spin and twist all around. Uh, Medric. Right, I will hit the swarm next to Silas. Okay. With damage. 13. Uh, 13 is enough. 
Oh. My hero. He. Boom. For seven damage. I hope that's the one. Okay. Um, yes, as as bones start to fly out, you, you, can, you can feel the satisfi- satisfaction of metal breaking as bits and pieces that were connecting this whole thing together start to start to collapse and come apart. Um, that was your action. Bonation, hammer time. All right. Please hit. Hits. Ha! Five damage. Nice. As now, you seem to have found your rhythm, and maybe it's because, you know, hit it with fire was the inspiration. Maybe it was because you were tired of this thing hitting everything. Maybe it's because it decided not to hit you for a while. You're not really sure what it is. Whatever combination of things means it is now being decimated. Um, From, uh, let's see. Uh, Yeah, let's see. Um, From the center, he uh, he chooses once more to gesture towards the uh, back behind him. Once again, a, a ghostly hand forms above the thing. It clatters into the ground. This time, uh, even more awkwardly than the first, when it hits the ground, it seems to shimmer and shatter and twist and turn, but finally grinds itself into the floor. Um, and you, the whole room shakes and shudders. Actually, everybody needs to make a, uh, a dexterity saving throw. If you cannot be knocked prone, this would be appropriate. Uh, so he can do that on other people's turns? He can. He has okay. legendary actions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, is it magic? No, it's physically the whole place is, sho- is shaking. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oop, he doesn't have that, so he might even be knocked over. He's not. Uh, ten, you are knocked prone. Uh, Medric and Annie... Dexterity saving throws. The entire place is shaking and shuddering. I got a seven. Yay. Uh, Medric, you're prone. Um, <laughs> no. All three of you are knocked over uh, as the as the floor tilts uh, rapidly in a couple of different directions, and you get this weird sensation of the floor pushing up on you heavily. The energy down in this column begins to thrum faster and, and uh, twist, but now seems to be almost solid pulses. Um, Silas, you're up. Oh, wait, sorry. The skeletal thing actually has to attack, doesn't it? It will attempt to overwhelm you uh, and hold you within the radius of this, this twisting knives that the other has created. So that is a dexterity saving throw. Uh, yes, for Silas. You're muted, but I knew what you said. Yeah. I'm psychic. Ten. Uh, unfortunately, you take five bludgeoning damage to necrotic, and you are bound. Um, that means you do not have movement. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, uh, where are we here? The Cloud of Daggers, which is the name of the spell, but uh, really it is the... the uh, effect of it. There is no saving throw. Oof, okay. You just take damage. Uh, eight points of slashing damage. Okay. As you're being so, held in, the, and you're being held within the, 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 the creature. Uh, the creature also takes that damage. It is no longer uh, uh, really happy with its master, but also has no choice about it. Uh, Medric, you see that it's holding the limp form of Silas. And kind of holding him into, it would be the equivalent of someone holding someone into a spinning blade at this point. That's no good. Um, that was Silas's, beginning of Silas's turn, actually. So he lives the rest of your turn as you are unconscious. Annie. Um. Uh, more because I'm in the area. You took it because you were there. That was the, the damage I rolled. Um, well, I, 
not in as bad of a shape as, as Silas is. Um, Relatively fine. Relatively fine. Um, how far can I get? Um, I can get to here. Uh, and, yeah. and I'm going to hmm. I'll shoot at uh, the heart land. Okay. <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen is not a hit. It glances off the uh, the side of its surface. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Uh, and I'll once again give metric advantage to hit the swarm. Okay. Um, yes, I was right there. You do realize that Silas is being held inside the whirling blades that are surrounding uh, the fellow Thank right you. now. I, I can't get to him and get him out. I don't have enough movement for that. Yep, just making sure. Um, let's see. It's his turn. Um, he is going to... Hmm. Does he want to do that? Uh, sure. He steps away from, from you, Silas. You will have an opportunity attack. But he's dead. Oh, you're unconscious. Yeah, he's not dead. That is much more important. Yeah. Uh, but then this time, with his own hand, uh, presses what's necessary on top. And this one glides easily into the floor. Um, with this last one in place, the heart bursts in light, um, shrouding the entire area. And the whole place lurches up even further. This time it's slightly tilted. Um, and you kind of get the impression that maybe tilted slightly towards the the large opening at there, uh, that are where all the energy is going and flowing. That is his turn, Medric. I'll hit the swarm. Okay. Or not. Mm, unfortunately, not able to hit the swarm. <sighs> um, because the swarm has you grappled, uh, first of all, it takes damage. Uh, does it have Silas grappled? Not me. Yep, it does. That's what I mean. It has Silas grappled. <laughs> you watch as the blades start to spin and grind down on the uh, bones. There's almost nothing holding uh, uh, Silas there anymore. Um, weirdly enough, the effect is actually there, but you can imagine the desperation that was felt by... So uh, the hammer is going to take a swing at it. Come on, hammer, you can do this. Okay, the hammer did this. The hammer hits. Poof. And I hit the wrong button. There we are. Uh, and that is enough. Uh, as the last remaining shards uh, uh, sort of crash away from uh, Silas, um, and he is no longer being held, his body falls limp to the floor. Um, you could, I would say, be able to drag him out of the effect of the whirling blades, perhaps, with your movement. Okay, I will do that. Because he's not resisting, it's not impossible. You're right next to him, so I'm assuming you're going to pull him back just outside of the the, uh, the whirling blades. Yeah, like one square that way. Okay. Uh, and that is your turn. The swarm is no more. As the bones go clattering, and in fact, the bones themselves kind of get drawn up into the the swirling blades that are around him, uh, and then kind of let loose and fly down towards the. Uh, the opening as well, kind of zooming out that way. Uh, Silas, death save, please. That's one success. With the way your guys' yep. roles have been going, I kind of expected to be in that 20 and you'd pop back up, which would be kind of hilarious. Um, Annie. Uh... The heart, it didn't go anywhere. It's just going stronger, right? That's right. 
Okay, so I will once again try to shoot it. Um, it's like I, is modeled through the numerous cracks and big chunks that have been taken out of it so far. Um, I would like to use my bonus action and my movement to give myself advantage with steady aim. Certainly can. Uh, 22. 22 definitely hits. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so that is nine, and then sneak attack because of the advantage. Mm -hmm. For another 10. <laughs> so, describe to me how your arrow pierces the heart. I feel really bad for doing this because I like your stuff. But we're kind of desperate. Uh, and I whisper to myself, thank you for your sacrifice. I'm sorry. And I shoot, shoot straight through. Uh, and the, the crystal heart shatters into a million pieces flying in all directions. The light remains for a second longer, almost like the spirit of Regalester herself was there. And if you squint the right way, maybe it does have a, a feminine form standing tall, but then it too bursts into a brilliant light. Um, again, coming this time uh, from the, the figure standing in front of you is the sort of croaky, hoarse whisper uh, shout, if you will, uh, no, as the light gives way. The energy in the hallway seems to continue for a second, and then sweep backwards through the room. Everybody, please make a dexterity saving throw. Is it magic? It is magic. Oh, no, I that. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I got a twenty-one. All right. So only only uh, Annie is kind of swept up in this, as the floor falls out from all of you, uh, both. Uh, 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 Silas and Medrick, you kind of managed to, well, Silas on the ground. <laughs> no, sorry, Silas is unconscious. Yeah. So, uh, no, Med Medrick is holding on to you, yeah. though, and, and Medrick got a natural 20, so it'll oh. count for both of you. That's pretty good. Uh, so, Medrick, with, with uh, kind of one hand on uh, Silas's collar and the other one gripping onto the stone below you as the ground gives way and you find yourself hurtling and following, uh, falling, uh, as you go uh, flying, uh, 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 well, seems like you're flying upward, but it's in fact the effect of the of the ground falling beneath you. Um, the uh, space turns and twists uh, and cr starts to to uh, crumble. The energy flows backward, and in an instant, the the sort of aura that was around, or the 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 cloak that was around the the strange undead being gets billowed backward, and you can see that aside from the skull, there is nothing but machine, nothing but metal uh, interwoven, intertwined, uh, holding up the one skull. And, and that detaches. The metal ball body falls to the ground, and the skull flies backward out towards the uh, uh, towards the back of this space. Um, and moves towards a, a small opening you can see there. Um, when it crashes down, oof, um, I think Annie's going to get knocked unconscious. Yes, I have. You take 12 bludgeoning damage from the fall. Uh, if you have anything that, that uh, mitigates fall damage, it is appropriate. Uh, I know monks do. I don't think that rogues do. Nope. Oh, Sarah does. Uh, as uh, as you collide heavily with the floor, um, all of the bones in the room go go flying in all directions, uh, and an opening seems to be uh, well, the small opening at the back where the skull is flying seems to be there, um, and seems to be flying under its own power as well, actually as the body was crushed. Uh, Medric. I'll cast Prayer of Healing, so that's a 2d8 plus Wisdom Modifier for 6 full. That also takes 10 minutes. Oh, what? Damn it. Uh, okay, so let's... Or another combat. Hmm. 
Okay, so I'll grab one of my healing crystals. Okay. Break it over Silas. Okay, you smash into his forehead, caving it in. Wait, no. <laughs> uh, not that kind of advantage now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as you take the and moment to, to crumble, crumble it into his uh, his lifeless <laughs> form, uh, roll the 2d4 plus 2 uh, healing. And can I cast a uh, cure wounds on any? Uh, well, that'll be the next action. At this particular point, the skull comes flying by you and then flies down the uh, open uh, hallway. My spiritual in the didn't get to go. Um, yeah, you can. I don't know if it can catch up to him. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Damn it. You could cast Healing Word. Or no, you don't prepare Healing Word. No. But it flies very, very quickly. Um, he actually flies far faster than he can walk. Um, but it feels as though the entire place has, has landed, if you will. Weirdly enough, it feels as though you've come from a high height. Um, it also feels as though, uh, actually, yeah, you would hear the irregular thrumming in the walls around you. And I will assume that you have cast uh, a cure wounds on Annie. So go ahead and do that first. Yeah. And then, uh, because we know you're all going to be awake, I will give you all the opportunity to make a... Hmm. I will say Arcana or Survival Roll. And Whoa. really, it's the highest one that's going to matter. And he gets a shit ton of HP. Or a shit ton of HP. Nice. Mm. I'll give another oh, one. I got two. So Silas gets another 4 HP. And what did you roll on Survival or Arcana? Uh, let's see. Uh, six. Six? Okay. Then it is uh, Silas who realizes this first. Kind of, You take a few moments and you realize that all the, the machinery that's in the walls is now is still active. And effectively, this place is tearing itself apart. If you're caught in here, you're probably going to be crushed. Well, uh, this place as in this room or the entire thing seems to be... Whatever the apart. structure is, because it seems to be all the walls and you'd seen this, this, uh, this mechanism in all of the walls around you so far and all of them seem to be coming apart, grinding themselves to dust, turning the place and churning it around. In fact, you still feel the, the floor kind of unevenly moving. Uh, Once it's not me figuring out that the place is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> we, have our, we have a history of this happening. Uh, that um, we came or the way that skull face went? Skull face went somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's that up. Yeah, he's now out of I was sight. unconscious. Uh, Silas looks over to the to where the heart was. What is left of the heart? Small chunks. No larger than your thumb. I'll pick up a few. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to scoop up a handful of them and shove them in a pocket. Uh, well, let's follow the skull. I'll also do, uh, I'll, I'll pick up a few, as many chunks as I can find. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to spend an action catching chunks? Blowing... Yep. Yeah, that sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the the uh, room starts to shift and shake uh, and tilt. All of you make dexterity saving throws. This is a uh, uh, a essentially a chase escape um, skill challenge. Each of you have to make your own separate skill challenge, but you can help someone else. Um, if you're ahead, for example, you can help somebody else to catch up. Uh, from is thirteen your role? Uh, uh, yep. Medric, okay. Uh, Medric, you're knocked off your feet. The other two are standing when we start this, so you're going to be a half a movement behind the other two to start with, uh, uh, Medric. Okay. So, 
tell me how you are barreling down this hole. Is there anything you can figure out that would help you to do so? If you have magic spells or fly or something like that, that would be appropriate. I know these ones are, I'm not happy with these particular skill challenges. I need to figure out a different way to do these ones. Um, I just don't have any magic that helps. Yes, yeah. Sam. Yeah, no, I, I think, all right, we'll make it a simple, we'll make it a simple set of roles. Um, you can choose to use ath athletics or acrobatics. Yeah. That's kind of all I've got. Acrobatics. Woof, there you go. So, uh, well, uh, you can use that, that extra uh, momentum to help uh, uh, Silas, who's about to fall over. He's unsteady on his feet, as opposed to just leave him behind. Or you can just sprint ahead and leave him behind. Like, that's kind of up to you, but I'm assuming you probably want to keep him alive. Um, I don't know if it's everyone yeah. for themselves just yet. All right. Um, Not quite, but she doesn't want to be crushed in a building. <laughs> As you're proceeding down this, this hallway, you start to notice there are magical sigils along the sides of it um, that seem to be themselves sort of sparking with energy. They had themselves been very, very powered up just recently and seem to be overloading somewhat. Uh, one more round of this. So everyone with the acrobatics or athletics once more. Athletics. That's a two. Again with a nat 20. Oh, no, wait, that's... Wait, did you roll two nat 20s? No. Natural one. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you are all delayed, um, you take oof, four points of, of uh, bludgeoning damage as rocks fall from the ceiling. Hopefully not everybody dies. And since you didn't succeed that round, there's still one more round. Again, if anything you can think of to make it easier or anything you can do to make it, uh, since some of you are doing better than others, you might choose to help someone, but... 15? <laughs> nope. I'm trying to think here. Just right someone, quick. for example, could shout and say, move this way, not that way. Which can I grab a hand pull him along? <laughs> You succeeded, but you didn't get a critical success. There's not really extra extra successes to spend. Yeah. Um. Yeah, she's gonna just keep running. Okay. Uh, that's why the right button. <laughs> Eighteen. Okay. Silas is lagging behind a little bit. Um, the two of you can see an opening up ahead. It looks as though the, the tunnel wall itself has crashed and you see water flowing in towards you. Uh, the two of you have kind of reached the edge of the water. Silas a few steps behind and the water rushes up to, to meet all of you flowing over. There's a moment of panic and then you realize you all have gills because uh, of the spell that was cast earlier. The water washes in and kind of washes over you. For you, Silas, it's actually much easier to move now uh, as you feel the, the mother's embrace once more. And you are all floated out through the hole to see the devastation. What you Do see, see um, well, what you see, first of all, is just churned up sand and water and rock and stone. Um, you kind of move a little bit away from it as it is impossible to see anything in this particular space. As you float a little bit higher up, you start to get the full sense of what it was that you were inside. As you realize what it was that you just came out of was an enormous forearm as the entire shape of an arm lies below you, hundreds of feet long. Um, Told you. The, um, no sign of the sea devils they seem to have left possibly when this thing rose up out of the sea as you soon discover um and then crashed back down into the sea you do spot a singular figure not too far away laying on the on the bottom of the water it looks to be a humanoid a little bit taller than you slender with a strange nose shape 
almost completely flat, almost cut off. And weirdly, it's recognizable. No longer crystal. No longer the grand vision she once was. You see Regalesta. Lying, prone, unmoving. What do you do? I'll go towards her. Okay. She looks battered and bruised, cut and torn, pierced and punctured. Peaceful. I'll grab some of the shards of her heart and put them next to her, see what happens. The shards crumble into dust. She opens her eyes, starts to choke. It appears she can no longer breathe water. Crap, Silas. Water breathing? Sorry, I, I've already done that for the day. She looks uh, up at all of you with panic. I'll Watch grab onto her and swim for the surface. Okay. Give me an athletics check. You don't have a swimming speed as such, right? Okay. You grab onto her and start power uh, uh, legging towards the, the surface of the water, easily recognizable above you, dragging her. She's kind Charlie, of... Can you swim? What? Silas is the one who can swim. It's, she's trying to make it easier. Helping me out. <laughs> There's two problems with that. One, Silas is not strong. The other thing is Silas doesn't look like he wants to help much. He's very unsure about whether she should be allowed to exist. Okay. Because of who we're working for. Absolutely fair. Silas, um, help me out. And he's going to help. Okay. Uh, you can make another roll this time with advantage. You are cresting towards the surface, but you can see that she's she's uh, no longer blowing bubbles. We can fix that at the surface. <laughs> Not naturally. You do get advantage. Oh. 22. 22. Uh, as you crest the surface, uh, she coughs and sputters and coughs up a lungful of water. She seems to be barely breathing, but did survive long enough. Um and just sort of floating in, in the water, half floating, actually floating mostly with your assistance um, as you rise up. The spout is no longer visible at all. Deep below you lies the ruins of whatever Taraz was trying to do, the creation of the spout. And you can see one of the moons looking down on you. The larger moon, Marina, seems to be almost watching over and observing the proceedings. And I think that's where we'll break for this week. Run a little long. Um, but uh, hopefully you've had a, an opportunity to get a sense of what might happen next. Um, way to go, guys. I really didn't know how that was going to go. There were I outlined several failure and several success scenarios, and you guys kind of blew through all of those. That <laughs> guy got away. Damn it! <laughs> um, that was one of the the the, the possibilities. Um, yep. It was a possessing entity kind of thing. I was pretty sure we wouldn't get him this time. Yeah, it's more complicated than that, as you might thing. imagine. But uh, but yes. Uh, it was, uh, uh, he had an escape route. He didn't want to have one, but he had one. Uh, but he lost a lot of progress. Congratulations, guys. Um, you had your first encounter with Taraz Nakma Daugul. If you are uh, curious about this, if you're curious about what's happened so far, you can always go back to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. All of the, uh, the I said it way too fast. YouTube.com slash ENCAF1. It's also twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 if you're watching this on YouTube. Well, you can find us on Sundays at 3 o'clock Atlantic, and we play here uh, live. That was today's session. You can also uh, find us as part of the Crucible Gaming Network, cruciblegaming.ca, uh, a growing collection of gamers who just want to talk about gaming. So it seems like a reasonable thing to do. I want to thank my players for joining me today. Uh, thanks to each of you 
for making my life interesting. <laughs> as far as this game goes, it'd be a lot less interesting if I was just, you know, having Taraz win everything. But I've got to say, uh, MVP possibly goes to Annie for resisting everything that Taraz sent yeah. at her except for a fireball. And even then, kind of going, yeah, I'm kind of toasty, but I'm still here, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, again, thanks for playing. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll be back again next time. Thanks for playing. See you on Valentine's. Mm -hmm.